Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to take on a Daiwa Sea line It's the classic series. It's the uh, graphite frames with the chrome trim rings. This one is the Daiwa 47H. It's a very close uh, family member to the Daiwa 50H. The 50H does not have the level line feature and it has just a little bit more of spool capacity. So there were actually a, another reel made in there. That was the 27H. It's a smaller format of the level line than is kind of like the younger brother of the 47H. But we're going to work on the 47H today. It's a beautiful reel. We want to just clean this up and uh, give it a good tune up. And we're going to get this one back out there fishing again, give it a second chance. So I start by removing the exterior pieces and parts. Start by taking off the nut cap that holds the handle nut on. And uh, while I do that, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody involved in keeping us safe during the pandemic. Your efforts truly are heroic and, and appreciated. And without you, we would be in far worse condition. Okay, we have a, an e-clip here. I'm going to remove that. I just There's tools out there, I understand, to do this, but I'm just going to hold one side of it, kind of pry it up and out. And be careful, this will shoot if you're not careful. They are kind of tension mounted and uh, they will come off just like this one here. And when I take my pieces and parts off, I like to put them in a parts tray. I use the bottom of a milk jug for a parts tray. You can pretty much use anything you want to use, but I do recommend that you have a system where you can uh, easily uh, take care of the pieces and parts so that when you go to reinstall, you know where they are. I have a deep socket here. It's an old Mitchell tool, but that deep socket is going to enable me to take the handle nut off. And one of the differences between the, the 27 and the 47 and the 50H, the 50H has a handle screw, the 27 and the 47 have a handle nut. So uh, just be aware of that. We're going to clean these up, but take pictures along the way. That's my first hint here. Take pictures along the way so that as you remove these pieces and parts, you know the assembly order in terms of bringing them back. It's always good to have a schematic. Those will help you to identify the uh, order and how it came, up, came together at the factory. Uh, but you don't need one, but I would recommend if you don't have that schematic, go ahead and take the pictures. Now, of course, I'm taking pictures here with the, uh, the video. You don't need to do a video. But whatever you do, uh, make sure that you have reference points so that as you go to uh, work on your reel, you have the confidence to know that there's a backup plan there should something happen uh, that shouldn't happen <laughs> or is unexpectedly happening to you. Okay, I just used 4.0 steel wool and a metal polish, an automotive uh, polish, to clean up some of the... Uh, film on the metal pieces and restore the, the bright work and it does a nice job of that. There are plenty of uh, cleaners on the market. One of them is a, uh, a metal cleaner from Flitz and there's others uh, in terms of polishes and the like but uh, in this case it was nearby and I just decided to go with that, uh, that chrome polish. There's a little bit more here that needs to be done and 4-0 steel wool is the least abrasive of the steel walls. It's a, it's a fine polishing type as opposed to uh, a coarser one that you might use to remove paint or the like. All right, so that's all done there. That goes into the thing. And now we have three side plate screws here. You want to take those off and you want to match the side plate screw to the right bit on your screwdriver. I just got a question in the other day in my one of my comment sections that uh, said it's got butterfly um, side plate screws. Butterfly means that the um, uh, the slot in the screw has become elongated and uh, the screwdriver could no longer grab that uh, slot. And the reason for that is somebody used a smaller screwdriver probably wound up with a screw that was very tight and as you kind of move your wrist to do that it butterflies that channel and makes it pretty tough. I laid those three side plate screws out because I want to make sure that they're the same size. They are. There's a little bit of dirt and salt maybe on those screws. So I just put a, a little shot of uh, penetrating oil on there to loosen that up 
make it easier to go back on install. With those three side plate screws, we should be able to remove the side plate. I'm going to remove the spool. And all you have here, essentially on the back end of it, is a bearing. I'm going to test the bearing first. I, I just used the tip of a, uh, a screwdriver and just planted in the center, mimicking the spool shaft. It works nicely. So you don't need to do anything there other than give it some oil. And we're going to go ahead and do that. Good drink of oil. We'll let it sit in there. And the same thing on this. This is a Teflon washer or a plastic washer. That doesn't need uh, any kind of greasing. It's self-lubricating. But there is a metal here on the worm drive. So put a drop of oil where the two meet and that'll work its way in over time. The last thing I want to do while I have this open is I'm going to use my screwdriver to remove the pole cap because I want to inspect that pole cap. I want to inspect the pole and I want to get some lubrication in there. So a gentle vibration usually knocks that uh, pole out. If you can't grab it, use something like a uh, needle nose pliers here to do that. And the pole is a cylinder. It's a metal cylinder with a fork-like approach up top. This one's in good condition. Uh, you want to check to make sure that the pole teeth are even. But I do notice that there's a little bit of dirt right on the shoulders here. So we're going to go ahead and clean that dirt off each side plate so that you have a nice flat and clean uh, piece. And then we can go ahead and install. So put a little bit of oil into the channel where that is going to glide. Don't worry about it leaking down onto the worm gear. You want the uh, lubrication there as well. Go ahead and put the pole back in. I'm just kind of trying to find the location. And then if you turn the wheel here and hold your finger on the pole, that should set it in a track. You'll see it moving. And that's exactly what you want to do. Here. Got a little bit of uh, film on that cap. Let's go ahead and take care of that with the steel wool as well. And this is a good time to tell you if you like these kinds of videos and you would like to see some more of them, please subscribe to my channel. I post frequently and I post on all kinds of fishing wheels. So if you like the hobby or if you just like watching how fishing wheels come together and what makes them different from each other, uh, subscribing is the best way to do that. And hit that notification button. That notification button will tell you when I'm posting and what I'm posting. And you can make a decision as to whether that's something you want to watch or not. So maybe you're only interested in uh, low profile bait casters or freshwater reels. Well, if you see that posted as a saltwater reel that I'm working on, well, you don't necessarily need to watch that. But if you see one come up that uh, would pique your interest, well, then that's kind of what that function is about. So subscribe and hit that uh, notification button and uh, you'll be aware of which ones you can watch. Okay, I'm going to use the fishing reel grease now to put a little bit of grease onto the stud on the back of the spool and onto the stud that's going to go through that uh, pinion gear. I'm going to use a paper towel just to wipe off a little bit of the excess there. And there's a nice product out there. It's a rod and reel cleaner. This one happens to be from Penn. But I do like to, to use that product while I'm servicing any reel, not just this reel, but any reel, just to clean it up. There's no sense going through all the effort of working on a reel and uh, not leaving it clean in the end. The, probably the biggest issue with fishing reels is dirt gets in there, clogs mechanisms. So if you're going to do the, uh, the work, go ahead and uh, take a moment and uh, just go ahead and clean that base while you're at it. All right, we're going to put the, the spool back in. And as I put it back in, I notice there's a little bit of line stuck to that, that little uh, hold fast there. So I'm just going to trim that line off while we're at it. I just use a, a utility knife and a little bit of pressure. That way you don't scar the, the spool or anything. And that frame assembly is pretty much done other than uh, using that same cleaner on the outside here. Let's go ahead and do that. now. This one has lost its badge. You would have a 47H on the badge here. And uh, that's not uncommon at all. 
This one happens to have the badge on it, the 27, but that has, obviously has no effect on the fishing reel at all, but it does, does affect you identifying the reel if you didn't know what it is. And in this case, this is the 47H, and we know that. All right, let's go over to the other side now. This is the, uh, the business side of the reel. Four bridge screws, if you turn it over, you can see the four bridge screws here. One of them has a little hold fast nut on it. That hold fast nut is because of the, uh, the dog spring. It wants to give you a little bit of extra hold power there. And uh, we'll go ahead and remove those so that we can pull the bridge out. One of the things I like to do before I start that is to remove the spring so that that doesn't shoot when we take the bridge off. So you can go ahead and do it just like that and put that into your parts tray. I'm always leery about pieces and parts that uh, can come off when you go to disassemble the reel. So go ahead and do that and you'll save yourself some trouble later on. All right, there's four screws now that hold the bridge on. As I mentioned, one of them has that uh, little retention nut on it on the, the dog side. These are long screws, so just when you think you have them out, you really don't. And every now and then with this reel, if you were using them in salt water, salt does accumulate in that channel there. So just be aware of that. You may have to use a penetrating oil or something to, um, to clean that channel out or to get the um, uh, stuff dissolved in order to move forward. All right, well, somebody uh, let me put that one on extra tight. I don't know why, but they did. I'm going to go find a, uh, a little uh, nut driver for that, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I was able to use my uh, little ratchet to remove the set screw, and then I went ahead and I took the two screws out there. So always good to have extra tools around that are job specific. All right, we've taken out the back ends. We have the dog here, and uh, we can push the bridge through. Now under the bridge, there's a yoke that has two springs, you don't want to lose those, so what I like to do is cup my hand as I push the assembly through. That's going to prevent anything from shooting as you lift off that plate. Here's the first of those springs and right into the parts tray with that. Second one goes in there as well. Then we can remove the yoke, or the jack, the yoke, the pinion gear, the dog, and the main assembly. So there's a bearing on the back here. And uh, we'll just uh, go ahead and we'll take care to clean up some of this because that's essentially what a tune-up is all about. It's about inspecting your parts for wear, making sure that uh, there's nothing that needs to be replaced. And if it does something that needs to be replaced, going ahead and doing that. It's about um, getting rid of the dirt and the old grease and, and the like. And it's about... Um, just making it ready. So we were able to pull the gear shaft off of the, uh, or the gear set off of the gear shaft because we no longer have that clip up top. Now we can clean underneath. And the 50H and some other reels are actually pin that gear sleeve. There's a little pin that sits here and rides in a groove. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to test that bearing. That's working fine. If you needed to remove the bearing, there's a little clip right in here. And that clip would be the, the, uh, the way to move the retention out of the bearing there. Okay. There's a uh, push through here now on the gear sleeve. That's going to give us access to the drag washers to remove them. These drag washers are in very good condition. I can see that already. These are leather drag washers. You just want to remove these. You want to check the condition of them. You want to make sure that they are cleaned, re-lubed, and ready to go. So there's one more in here I'm just trying to get out. I use the tip of a utility knife sometimes as that little lever. And uh, there we go. So these are in pretty good condition. They've dried. So you can see that there's a little bit of drying going on the metal piece. That's okay. Just gently pry it apart, just like that. 
And then what you want to do is you want to take the steel wall that you had and just clean off that residue. So how does that res residue get on there? Well, it gets on there because the washers get grease. As the grease dries, if the reel is not maintained on a regular basis, the grease will dry. And eventually the grease acts as a glue. And because leather is fibrous, leather is going to transfer and kind of glue onto it. So that's, that's what's happening there. All right, I'm just going to clean off the excess grease from the bottom of the gear. We're going to inspect the teeth on the gear. They're all in good condition. We're going to use our fishing reel grease. In this case, I'm using pen precision reel grease. And we're going to just load up the outside of that, uh, that gear there with some new grease. So if you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, uh, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, maybe you're thinking about buying a reel, maybe uh, there's a question about how a reel performs or something, uh, go ahead and leave it in the comments section. I'll be happy to provide you with uh, whatever information I can uh, regarding that. All right, very hard, but uh, fibrous washers. I use a, a uh, Cal's Universal Drag Grease for this to, to re-moisten them. They are porous, so grease will help, and it will provide a little bit more slip. So we're going to put that one in first. And then if you notice the layout on the metal washers, we have two round ones and a one that's uh, got ears on it. The two round ones are called um, keyed washers. That's called the eared washer. And then you have two tension washers, which belong up top. Since there are two of these, one belongs on the bottom, one belongs on the top. One is thicker than the other. The thicker one belongs on the top. All right, so first one, the leather's in. This is kind of a repeat. I like to kind of coat them and use my gloved hand as a tool to spread it in. If you get too much on there, wipe a little bit off. You're only going to press it out if you don't, uh, don't wipe it off. It has no effect to put too much grease in there. One more. So I use a Cal's Universal Dry Grease here. Understanding that you may only have one reel that you're working on, don't run out and buy the dry grease. You can use your fishing reel grease there. It's uh, not going to make that much of a difference. All right. The last of the round ones. These are not flat washers. They have a belly in them or a concave to them. And it's all about the uh, tension from the star adjuster. So you can mount, mount these several different ways, face to face, back to back, or uh, nestled. Uh, I like to put them kind of back to back there. So that's what we're doing there. To complete the bridge assembly then, we're going to take our grease brush. I use a brush, you can use whatever you want. Put that on, and then we'll be ready to reset this. We cleaned up the uh, yoke and the jack assembly earlier. We've inspected the teeth on the uh, pinning gear. So it's time to put a little bit of grease on the pinion gear. We got grease on the main gear already. So let's just put that there. And take the yoke. It's called the yoke because it looks like, well, a yoke on an oxen or an ox cart. So get a little bit of grease on the shoulders, both sides. The side that has the slot on it is the slot, the, the side that faces the spool. Now some some reels, this mounts inward, some it mounts outward, but in this case, it's mounting facing outward. All right, we have our side plate. Just want to clean up. You can see we've got some accumulated uh, dirt. Now, like I'm going to use the penetrating oil now as a general degreaser and as a cleaning agent. I don't like to use penetrating oil as a as a lubricant, although it says it's a lubricant. Well, it is a lubricant, but it's a light oil lubricant. And the fishing reels, I like to use fishing reel oils and greases. And uh, they, they seem to last longer, don't evaporate as much, and uh, give a little bit more permanence in terms of water resistance and the like. All right, that's clean. I'm going to put a drop of oil on the eccentric underneath there. That's the free spool release. Make sure it works nice and easy. I'm going to grab those two springs that I told you about there. And we're going to put those in the cavities on each side. This is a little bit of a balancing act on this one. It's just uh, every reel seems to have its nuance 
and this one, these are just uh, kind of almost painful in terms of the balancing act. Uh, same thing happens on the pen, pen GTI, GTI series, which is almost identical to this reel. Different manufacturers, but very similar in terms of use and makeup. Push the gear in when you've centered the springs. This is your jack, it just lays over the top. And that's how that works. Now you want to hold the pressure on the jack because you just laid it on top there. There's nothing fancy going on there. And what we want to do next is we want to get this set in. So this is relatively an easy way to set it in. It just goes straight in. But remember, you have to mount the dog. So we're going to bring this in. And before I go all the way down on that, I want to get the, the dog set. When you set the dog, it's the beak side down and slide it in under that bridge before you snap the rest of the bridge in. It doesn't have to be exact, but it does need to be there close enough, right? And then you can use a, uh, a pin or something to, to load that up the rest of the way. And that's the one I like to work on first because I don't want that slipping and going places. So I'm going to put the screw in from behind and line it up and I'm going to get that screw stuck. Now there's studs at that uh, bridge kind of clicked over that's holding it in place at this point so you don't have to worry about it moving too much. This, this is a stud here and a stud that, well, wherever the other stud is, right over here. So you don't need to worry too much about that. When I install the, the screws I go north, south, east, west. So I got one in the corner here. Let's go up to the other side. Get that one in. So if, if you have a reel that needs to be serviced and you're not up to doing it yourself, well, I do that as well. So if you uh, if you want to contact me by the using the email on a business card that follows, I'll be happy to provide you with service and repair information and where to send the reels. I do that by mail, or you drop it off if you're local. Uh, you can drop them off, but the uh, I do provide the services there and uh, be happy to. Uh, to give you that information if you're so interested. The idea behind this channel is not that, not to promote my real repair business, but to show you how to do it so you can do it yourself. I'm trying to pass along what I know, and hopefully there's a lot of folks that have benefited from that over time. All right, we put the four on. Remember, we get that one little nut that goes over that one on the dog, so let's go put that on right now. And that can get spun down pretty tightly. And I want to reverse the throw on my ratchet wrench and just use that to complete the tightening. I'm not going to over tighten it like the last person. And then before I do anything else, I'm just going to turn it to make sure it turns nicely. And of course, everybody's looking at it right now saying, hey, but wait a minute, you don't have that dog spring on. Well, you're right, I don't. So let's go ahead and put that on. I like to hook the one in the back there first. There's not a lot of tension on this spring. So generally what you can do is you can just grab it with a pick or something, maybe use a uh, needle nose pliers or something. You can just walk it over. Oh, took that off, but get that back on. Springs are the bugaboo of most real services. Alright, let's do that. Take the pliers and just walk it over the tip the other. Now you have a functioning anti-reverse. Always test that before you go too much further because you don't want to button up the whole reel only to find out you missed something along the way. All right, just a little bit of cleanup on this spacer here. Spacer goes in, nicely cleaned. Star adjuster goes on. And if you're Starting to get down and get a little tight, you can always grab your handle and use that as a wrench to, to get those other turns on there. Okay, at this point we can go put that back on. We've put the grease on here, we've cleaned the case. We'll go ahead and line that up. Press in, hold it. And then we'll get those three screws back on. This is a nice reel. It's, uh, this one's got a lot of fishing left in it. Alright, there's one, 
too. And this is where that parts tray becomes valuable. Because I'm looking in the parts tray and it reminds me what I need to, what I have remaining in there. And if I was seeing something that I missed, for example, it's not unusual for me to re to miss that anti-reverse dog spring as I'm kind of going through the process. Well, if I see it in there, I know that I'm not done and that uh, things need to be uh, done one way or another to uh, correct that situation. Okay, next up, I'm going to put the handle on. But before we put the handle on, we have that little winged tension uh, washer that goes on next. That's so that you don't back the adjuster off and wedge it onto the handle. It's a little bit of a spacer, which is going to provide you some relief there. And we're going to put that nut on. I'm going to use that little tool. You don't need this tool. It's a 12 millimeter nut and uh, any 12 millimeter socket or open tailed wrench is going to uh, work just fine. If you get that peak, the point of the nut facing that screw hole generally, you will be able to uh, get this cap on. And also if you get a flat side perpendicular to that hole, generally that lines it up as well. And you can see Got lucky there, but it's right in the hole. And uh, all I got to do first is <laughs> that's, there's my parts tray. That little E clip needs to go on. So get that in the in the crease. I'm going to use this. I don't have a lot of hand strength. I'm going to use this pliers to pull that in. There we go. Now we can put that perfectly aligned nut cap on. Put the nut on. The screw on rather. Tighten that down, and this reel's about ready to go fishing. We'll give it a little bit of a test. But uh, this one, essentially, the service is done. So if you like this kind of a video, and again, if you want to see more, please subscribe. But also indicate that you like it on the uh, on the views. Get this all cleaned up nicely. It's ready to go. So there you go. A beautiful reel. One of the best ones, in my opinion, ever made. And uh, this Sea Line series is just bulletproof. This one and the... Uh, 50H, just fantastic reels for salt water, and uh, they'll last a lifetime if you properly maintain them. There you go. And test the, the drag. You need to tighten it down a little bit. And then if you tighten down the reels drag, when you're done using it, back it off. You don't want to have a, a situation like we saw before where those uh, washers get pressed on to the, uh, the metal washers. But that's it. So everybody, please uh, enjoy your day. Stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.